Hey folks, Sirdar here, and in this episode of Dev with Sirdar, we're going to get an up-close and personal look at a new project designed to make Python faster, the no-gill version of Python. So first off, you're probably wondering, what is Python's gill and why does it matter? In CPython, which is the reference version of the Python interpreter, the global interpreter lock, or gill, controls access to Python objects for multiple threads. This way, two threads can't modify a single object at the same time and wreak havoc. The downside of the gill is that because of this, the threads in Python cannot be used for CPU-bound work. The threads in question are, in fact, OS-level threads. The problem is the gill forces them to yield to each other as needed. So you can use threads to wait on network I.O. or user input, and they are useful there but you can't use them to split up a number crunching workload in Python, and that's always been one of its big defects. So a version of Python without the gill would allow CPU bound threads, as they are called, to run fully side by side on different cores, as they can in other languages. Now, over the past several months, there's been work on an initiative in Python to transition to a version that doesn't use a gill. It's called PEP703, making the global interpreter lock optional. And now we've got a prototype version of such a Python, the no gill branch, as it's called. And I'm going to demonstrate a primordial prototype version of this to show you just how much faster Python can be when using threads on CPU bound workloads when you don't have a gill. So I have a program here that sums up a group of numbers in several different batches. And I'm going to run this task three times in three different ways. The first time I'm going to run it, I'm just plowing through everything in order. The second time I run it, I'm going to be using a thread in a thread pool to execute each task theoretically side by side. The third time, I'm going to use multiprocessing, which will run each task in a separate copy of the Python interpreter. Now, for the first run of this program, I'm going to use the bleeding edge version of Python, Python 3.12. This is still in beta, but it's available for testing use. So when I run it, You'll notice that there is no difference between the time that it takes to run these tasks one at a time and the time that it takes them to run as threads in a thread pool. And that's because the threads are all yielding to each other thanks to the gill. They can't do CPU bound work side by side. The only speed up we get is with a process pool. And we get a significant speed up with that, but the process pool system has a drawback. We have to spin up a bunch of copies of the interpreter and we have to serialize data back and forth between them and that can get unwieldy and slow. Threads stay in the same process where they're launched so they can theoretically access the same data faster. Now, let's try all of this with an experimental no-gill build of version 3.12, which I've compiled myself and gotten to run. So when we run it, as you can see, even the regular sequential run is a little bit faster, although we do want to take that with a grain of salt, given that these are alpha and beta quality releases. But the threaded version, the one running in thread pools, in, no, in the no-gill version, that version is even faster than multiprocessing. So we're getting all six cores of this machine being used for threads in parallel. This is roughly six-fold speed up. And this is all, again, with an alpha quality code base. Keep that in mind. So this is really impressive and really encouraging. It points towards how these efforts can make Python a whole lot faster when we work with threads. So you're probably wondering, how come nobody has tried to do this before? Well, there have been efforts to remove the gill in the past, but it's been a rough road, to say the least. See, the problem is, all of these previous efforts ended up making single-threaded code slower. And the vast majority of Python code out there is single-threaded. The core Python developers did not want to adopt a plan that would actually hurt performance for the most part, instead of improving it. So this new no-gill edition of Python uses a bunch of tricks to make things faster, and a really key one of them is called biased reference counting. And the way this works is most objects tend to be accessed by things that live in the same thread as the object itself. So when that happens, we can handle that with code that's optimized for that case. The rest of the time, we can fall back to slower code, relatively speaking, that handles things from different threads. This was a technique they hadn't tried to use before, so it was interesting to see how it played out. Now, this no-gill version of Python is not going to be a reality for most people, at least not right away. It's going to be phased in over several years. At first, the no-gill version will be an option. It'll be like a beta test that you can opt into. 
And then, after a little bit of public testing, it will become a supported alternative version of the Python runtime. You'll be able to download either the GIL or the no GIL version of Python, and both of them will continue to get upgrades and bug fixes side by side. And then finally, after a certain amount of work, and probably about five or so years down the road, the no GIL version will become the standard version. So again, this is going to be quite a ways, and there's always the chance this might not go off as expected. The larger Python community still has to buy into all of the changes that are on offer here, and those changes have to be completely backwards compatible with the existing Python ecosystem. So what does this mean for those of us who are using multiprocessing or async? Are those going to be less useful in the future? My answer to that is not necessarily. Async is a lot more lightweight than threads. It has a definite use case there. And as for multiprocessing, my own feeling is that it isn't going to be going away anytime soon because there's still plenty of code that uses it, and there may continue to be use cases that distinguish it from threads. So to sum up, Python's GIL has long been an obstacle to allowing code in the language to run in truly multi-threaded fashion. And a new proposal to remove the GIL, PEP 703, is on the table and on the fast track to being accepted. The code already produced around it is very promising, although assuming all goes as planned, it'll still be a few years before it becomes the version of Python we will all be using. But until then, there will be plenty of chances coming to try it out and see for yourself. So that's it for now. If you liked this video, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Dev with Sirdar and InfoWorld on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com.